We want to welcome everybody to this teaching tonight. The title is called Dealing with Grief. And before we get started, we want to ask everybody that comes across this, please share this with everybody that you know. Hit the like button, put this on your Facebook, share it on your pages that you have, and let's really get this going all over the place. And this isn't about just glorifying Gina and I with this teaching. We truly want to help many people in this teaching. So this is why we're requesting for people to share it on their pages and get this out on social media because we know that the more people that share things, more people get to hear it and can be blessed by a teaching. So I want you to hear a heart on that. That's why I'm putting that request out. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the teaching and tell your friends and family to hit the subscribe button so when new material comes out, it'll be available to them. So like I said, this title is called Dealing with Grief. And I want to start in the book of John, chapter 16, and he, I'm, let's see, I want to start 20 or 21. John 16, verse 20, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but while the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will now turn to joy. So I'm starting with that because Jesus is actually addressing people weeping, people in grief, and even in the Bible, it says that Jesus wept. I think people said that might be the, the shortest uh, verse in Scripture. Right. And even when he heard about the death of his friend Lazarus, even though he was going to raise him, it says in the Bible, Jesus wept. So before Gina reads this commentary that's so beautiful, it's important to know that we have a Savior. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. He is our everything. And we heard people talking and someone asked the question, who is Jesus to you? And I think sometimes in the stream that we're in, because on one end of the spectrum, there was such a wrong teaching that God was an angry father and is an angry father and you can't even approach him that people would be afraid to even talk to the father. Then it went over to a whole nother spectrum that Jesus just becomes everybody's best friend in the world and he's just my best friend. Right. Jesus is way more than just your best friend. He is our everything. He is the air we breathe. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. He is our everything. That's true. So yes, we want you to know that, that he is your friend, but he is so much more than that. He is the creator of the entire universe. He created the heavens. He created the universe, the galaxies. He, galaxies. He created us. He is the creator. We are created. And I want that holy reverence of the Father to come back in to the, the stream that we're in and just for all of Christianity to when they talk about the fear of the Lord, not fearing him that you're afraid of him, but having a holy, holy reverence of the Father, of who He is. He is holy. Right. So let's not lose that aspect of who He is. And He does love you dearly. He created us in His own image. So we are very dear to Him, which goes back to that Jesus has feelings too. In the Bible it says continuously, He was moved with compassion. He was tempted in all points, but without sin. So that, to me, he is much more than just a friend of mine. He is my life. He is my everything. And I love him dearly. He's done so much for me. 
Amen. 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 And that's important to get out. It is important. It's very important. So we want to talk today about, as a Christian, how do you handle grief? Because it's people think just because you're a believer that you automatically know how to deal with grief. And that some people even think that if you're a believer that you shouldn't even feel grief. That's a good so word. So we're going to address that today. Right. We didn't have this in the notes, but we say this a lot. Jesus himself says, in me you will have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. It's important to know that. Amen. So I'm going to read something because we thought this was so well written. Um, Nothing in life can prepare us for the death of a loved one. Whether death results from a sudden accident or a sustained illness, It always catches us off guard. Death is so deeply personal and stunningly final. Nothing can emotionally prepare us for its arrival. With every death, there is a loss, and with every loss, there will be grief. Grief doesn't come and go in an orderly, confined time frame. Just when we think the pangs of anguish have stolen their last breath, another wave sweeps in and we are forced to revisit the memories, the pain, and the fear. Sometimes we try to resist the demands of grieving. We long to avoid this fierce yet holy pilgrimage. We fight against the currents, terrified of being overwhelmed or of being discovered or of becoming lost in our brokenness. Culture tells us to move past this process quickly. Take a few days, weeks perhaps, to grieve, but don't stay there too long, people say. Grieving can make those around us uncomfortable. Friends sometimes don't know what to do with our pain. Loved ones struggle to find adequate words to comfort our aching wounds. Yet grief, as painful a season as it is, is a necessary part of healing. To run from grief is to run from the very thing that can quell the pain of our loss. Our grief has a purpose if we come to God and use Bible verses and prayer for healing. Grieving is the process God uses us uses to bring us to a place of wholeness. Grieving can be the most difficult time for people trying to balance the feelings of pain and loss while going forward with our everyday life. Give yourself space and time. Be honest with your emotions. Don't grieve alone and don't lose hope. All these things are so important. And I just want to say this, that no one can tell you how to grieve. It is very individual. And it is really, if if you are a believer, it is your time of entering in with Father God and dealing with the pain and the fear and and the the uh, sudden loss of a loved one, and really working through it step by step, and and you can't put a time frame on that, and Absolutely. don't let people do that to you because sometimes people mean well, they're well intentioned, but they try to push you along before you're really ready to move along so um this is if if you are in a time of grieving this is your time with the father and allowing him to comfort you and guide you and protect you and lead you to come to that place of healing and it has to be in your time amen good word amen 
I'm going to read Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and he saves those that are crushed in spirit. Another translation says have a contrite spirit, which means crushed in spirit. So that's so important to know that the Lord is near the broken hearted. Yes, he when is. people are dealing with a broken heart, the Lord is close to you. I can say this 100% with confidence because his word says that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you and sometimes in our grief sometimes people can't feel his presence mm -hmm. or feel the love washing over them others do and that's wonderful and it's a marvelous thing and god does that with people but i tell this to gina all the time i never want people to feel that God is not with them or doesn't love them because they are not sensing his presence at that moment. He's with you because he promises that he will never leave you or forsake you, and he is always there. He promises to be with you in your times of trouble. He's with you through the good, bad, and ugly. He loves you. He's a good father. Amen. So somebody needs to hear that and know it and truly believe it. King David, in the beginning of Psalm 34, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Later on, it goes on to a very popular verse, Psalm 34, verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I've heard Dan Muller talk about this. You know, a lot of people will question this. They will say, well, if God is so good then why did he allow the situation to take place why why am i hurting so bad right now and gene and i on just about every teaching because we learned this from papa doug it's so important for people to get this that we do live in a fallen world we do it is never god's will for somebody to die at an early age or for them to take their own life that is not the perfect will of the father his word says he put he puts blessings and he tells us there's blessings and curses and i hope that you will just choose life i set before you today these things and how, how oh how i wish that you would choose life life is from the father the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And sometimes when people are going through things, and we don't always know what people are going through. We see yeah. people, they could have a big smile on their face. Yeah. They could always say kind things to other people. They're joyful. They're uplifting. But we don't always see these things. And it's not another person's fault either if you don't catch that. You know, the, the devil wants you to feel guilty about choices that other people make. Right. We are believers in Christ Jesus. We love our Heavenly Father. We love people. And we are doing the very best that we can, that we yes, are working with, absolutely. to show love to others. So I'm going to boldly speak this out, because if anybody has ever right. spoken a word to somebody listening to this message that made them feel like they might have missed it and they did something wrong, right. I break that lie off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Because that is not the Father's heart and that's not the Father speaking in that matter. So be free and receive that freedom right now in that situation. Psalm 147, 
verse 3 says he heals the brokenhearted and he bandages up their wounds. So this is a very comforting verse to know. Now, when I'm saying this, I'm not telling you that just like that, when this verse is read, just all, all the grief and the pain goes away. I would love it to be. And for some people, it is going to lift off you today. But as Gina did read earlier, there is a process in it. Right. And it is okay. People do need to hear this. It is okay to go through your grieving process yes. the way that you go through it. Not the way that your friend tells you to go through it. Not even the way that your spouse tells you you should be going through it. And I'm going to be bold enough to even say, not even the way that a, somebody in leadership should be telling you how to go through it. The Father knows us. He created us in His image. And we are all individuals and we all handle things in different types of ways. Yes. The same scenario could happen to Gina and I, and we might handle it or feel completely different about it. And guess what? That's okay. It is. It's okay, and we want people to know that it's okay. Yes. So we want we want to lift that that shame and that guilt and the hurt off of you. And you are going to be free today in Jesus' name. And I have wonderful verses here, sweetie. I, okay. I, I, I had it. I had it. I had it hiding under Gina's beautiful legs, okay. so she couldn't Oops. find it. So I'm going to okay. help her out now. I'm going to Matthew. Matthew chapter eleven, verse twenty-eight to thirty. Here I am. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and I will and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. And I'm gonna give you another scripture. Romans chapter eight, verse eighteen. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The reason we're giving you so much scripture is because there's healing in God's word. Yes, there is. So it's, if, if we were giving, well, not if we are, because we are giving advice. The advice that we would give to somebody in grief, number one, reach out to people. Talk to people yes. that you feel you can trust. Yes. Sometimes people, like Gina said that earlier too, sometimes people, they're doing the best they can, but they don't really know how to deal in a grief situation. Yeah. So there's like two types of scenarios that, that happen. Maybe there's more than two, but the two that popped up in my spirit was in one scenario, they just, they do the avoidance because they really don't know, they love you, but they really just don't know what to say and how to bring the comfort. So they avoid and then the person feels like they're being left out and they're unloved. Right. And you're not unloved. The second thing that happens, and well-meaning people do it, I think we've all done it, I'm sure I've been guilty of it before. Something happens and we want to try to fix the problem and we want to yeah. say something to make somebody feel better and we, and we make a comment, but it really didn't help the person. Right. And then a third one, sometimes we speak when we're not thinking and, and we just let something out. And sometimes we just say something that might have been out of line. But as Christians, we are always called to show mercy and grace to one another. Absolutely. No matter what was done... Or what was said. We do what because what's gonna happen if we do not forgive these situations, then unforgiveness will come into our heart right. and it's gonna fester and it's gonna eat you apart. Because you're gonna give the devil a legal foothold to come into your life. We talk about these kind of things, and you're just you're inviting the devil in to have permission to come and steal 
kill and destroy. Yes. This is a great Jonathan Shuttlesworth because when you read the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, you would think that stealing and killing would be bad enough. But the devil was so horrible and cunning and, and nasty and filthy and rotten and he hates us because we are created in the image of God. I think uh, Tiff Shuttlesworth said all oh, Satan is he's an unemployed angel. He got booted out of heaven. Right. So he, he, he lost his glory. And we are glory carriers. Her shirt yes. says that. We carry the glory of God. Yes, Hallelujah. Do. So stealing and killing, if that wasn't bad enough, he wants to destroy. So when he destroying means after a loss happened, that's not even enough for him. Then he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your destiny, the calling on your life, your purpose. He wants to destroy your family and everybody else around in your Metron. And that's how he works. So be aware of that. So, right. so that doesn't happen to you. We're, we're giving you this instruction so you're aware of it. Because his word said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right. So Dan Muller says, get the knowledge and stop the destruction. That's good. These are great keys and it, it's just so true and it will help you. Yes, it will. Where are you at, sweetie? John. Yes. Okay, this is John 14, starting at verse 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So as believers, that's exciting. That's the good news, to know yes. that we have eternity with the people that we love who are believers in heaven. The Lord has, and it doesn't even say, I've, I've prepared a small little corner for you. Mm -hmm. He says, there are many mansions, and I go before to prepare a place for you. So your loved ones that believed are in heaven. So that's the good news of salvation. Yes, it surely is. And then did you have 1 Corinthians? I do. You do. Why are you in I, second? I don't know. What was I reading in First Corinthians? What am I reading? First Corinthians what? First Corinthians chapter one. Really? Starting at verse three to five. Huh. I have no idea how I ended up there. I'll tell you how right. because the notes say second Corinthians. Oh. Chapter 1. So where do you want me to be? Second Corinthians. And that's where you are at. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Wow, amen. Amen. So those of us Huge verse that already verses. are are rooted and grounded in the Lord, that already know the Lord, that have already experienced the comfort that the Lord gives us. We know that I mean God is love. He loves so that is really what we are called to do in these situations, in times of grief, are to love the people that are experiencing this loss, especially the ones that are getting heart, hit the hardest by it, is loving them, just being there to hold their hand, to give them a hug, to tell them how much they are loved, to spend time with them, to listen. So, I mean, when we know how much God loves us and we experience his comfort, his peace, his presence in our life, 
then we can then pour that out and offer it to others that are greatly in need during a time of grief, of just loving them. You're not called to fix them. You can't right. fix them. You're not supposed to have just the right words to suddenly just turn that. this right. into something and they go, oh, yeah, I didn't see it that way before. Right. That wipes all this away. It doesn't work that way. But we are called to love. So I think that's the most important piece in this. I know is it knowing is. that if you are a friend or a loved one of someone that is walking through a time of grief, is just being there, loving them. And if that means taking a walk with them, mm -hmm. just sitting beside them in silence, holding their hand, just letting them vent and cry, and maybe they're angry and they just have to let it all out, sit and listen and love them. But you're not called to fix it. So don't try to find those magical words that are going to make it all better. It, it just, that's not going to happen. Right, like Jean is saying, sometimes somebody just needs a hug. Right. Or they just need somebody to reach out to them and just say, I want you to know I'm thinking about you right. and I love you. Yeah. You don't have to, like she said, you don't have to feel like you have to call them up and bombard them with all kinds of advice and the way that you might handle a situation right. and deal with it because what works for you in that scenario may not be working for the other person. That's where discernment comes in. That's why it's so important that we say this all the time. Nothing will take the place of your walk with getting alone with your Heavenly Father Getting alone with Him, talking to our Heavenly Father, talking to Jesus, mm -hmm. talking to the Holy Spirit, reading the Word of God, reading the Scripture. Jesus is the Word, cap the capital W Word, but, but this is the Word of God too. If that offends people, be offended, we'll cast some demons out of you. This is God speaking to us. He left us this for a reason. This brings us comfort. Getting alone with the Father will bring you comfort. That's where the healing comes in. He's the one that's going to give you the best advice over anybody. He uses people. He will bring people into your life. But he knows you better than you even know yourself. So that's why it's so important to get alone with him. And when you read your Bible, don't that, listen, if you're going to read your Bible because you just feel like it's a task and you got to do a checklist on it, do yourself a favor and don't read it that way. But it's a classic damn molar. If you come from a humble heart and you just say, Lord, I want to know you, and you start talking to him, and then you ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate things to me, Lord, I, I, I love you and I want to know you more. Show me things in your word that pertain to the situation that I'm going through. Right. They will be highlighted and illuminated to you and it will mm -hmm. bring freedom into your life. That would be the reason why you want to read the Bible. Not just for a checklist of, yeah, I got that out of the way. I read my chapter for the day. I'm good. Now God's pleased with me. He loves you anyway. Right. He created you and he loves you. The reading of the word is actually, it, it's for your benefit. It benefits your right. spirit and soul and body. And Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. What a comforting verse. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then I notice there's a short commentary on here that says no more tears. And it says, in this life it may be filled with sorrow and pain, 
but we look toward the day when all things will be made new. A day is coming when suffering shall be forgotten and unimaginable joy will be our constant experience. So that is something that will bring you hope, even in your worst time of grief and loss. There are things in this life, the Bible does talk about mysteries and the hidden truth, and we are called to seek things out. But we all know, and we learned this from Papa Doug also, there are things that we are just not going to completely understand and know until that day right. when we are in the presence of the living God. Amen. Because the Bible says we, we know in part and we see in part. That's so right. we just get glimpses of things and then we add our commentary and opinions and thoughts into it. But there's coming a day and we're one day closer mm -hmm. and each day we're getting closer and closer to it. And that's the good news. That's not something to fear. Right. It says when you see that day approaching, look up. It, right. It's a good thing that we're getting closer to that day. And God's going to wipe every tear from our eyes. He's going to take every wrong and he's going to make it right. And we will see our loved ones. Our loved ones that have died in Christ. The hope that we have, this is how we can rejoice in a time of grief knowing that there will be a day that we will see our loved ones again. That, that's one of the beauties of Christianity that no other, if you want to call it a religion, no other God or no other religion can offer that or promise that to you. That's right. In Christ, we have eternal life. It says those that have the Son have life. Those that do not have the Son do not have eternal life. Yeah, so in Christ, we have eternal life in him. Yeah, and that can take me to 1 Thessalonians 4, Amen. 13. Yeah, I forgot I gave you that but one I to read. Do not, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen <clears throat> asleep, me. lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. So we have to look forward to eternal life in heaven with Jesus yes. and with those that we love. So that's the good news that we have to look forward to. So, yeah. Oh, it's fantastic it news. It is fantastic news. It is. It is. And I just want to say, um, I want to say one thing, and I don't want to get off on any kind of a rabbit trail on this one at all. Oh, this but, is very important. Though. Well, I think it's important. For those, when you were talking about, there are some things we're just not going to know in this life. And I, we can do a whole nother teaching Maybe even the next time on this, but we're not going to do it right now. We've talked about it before. Please, please, if you have lost loved ones, do not go seeking answers from mediums and psychics and all these other uh, sources of spirituality. Yeah, leaves, palm call. reading. Please do right. not do this. And all I'm going to say about it at this juncture is that this opens these types of things like going to medium, going to psychics, tea leaves, all those types of <clears throat> um, things open the door for Satan to come into your life. And we can explain that on the next teaching. We're not going to cover that now. But I just want to add that in because sometimes people are so lost and they're so confused and they're, they're, they're so desperate for answers or information that they turn to things thinking they're not ill-intended. They're just thinking they're going to get answers that are going to kind of like give them some kind of closure or resolve to something. Please do not go down that road and we'll cover that maybe next time. I don't know. We'll and that's in previous teachings. It we, is we've in previous that teachings, but I just felt, felt in my spirit bring it when up you said again. that. 
because a lot of times even Christians out of out of not knowing turn to those things. Yeah, and they read horoscopes. And it's unbelievable. It, it just me. really does, I promise you, it is going to invite in the enemy. So please work this grief process out with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen to Do that. Do not turn to other methods and means, please. That's a good word right there. Yes. And before we wrap this up, we our, our church has lost two people that were very dear to us and even more dear. There was other people that knew uh, th these two people much longer yes. than Jean and I knew them. Yes. But we lost our friend Trish and we lost a dear friend Pete. And we are just sending our love out to the family, yes. to their friends, to our church members. And we're, and we're reaching out and we're putting it out there. Because when Gene and I say something, we mean it. We love people. Yes. And we, if there is anybody that wants to reach out to us and talk to us about these things, we are here for you. We love you. There is no blame, no shame, no judgment on it. No. And I'm going to cover one more thing because, you know, because I want to clear this up. When some, this might ruffle feathers and I could care less about it. I know there's teachings out there and people will, will make people believe that if somebody takes their own life in a moment, that they're going to burn in hell for eternity. I, I truly believe that's a lie from hell. And only God knows the answer to this. No person has the right and can 100% say without a doubt that because somebody does something in a moment and makes a mistake and they're, and they're feeling so hopeless and helpless and don't see any other way and something happens that our Heavenly Father holds that against them. That's right. Now, I'm not condoning it, and I'm not recommending for people to do that, because life is a gift, and it's precious, yes. and it's valuable. But is God is near the brokenhearted. But He is near and the brokenhearted. And He loves you, and He's merciful, and gracious, and good, and... And I was reading that in one of our books about grief, and it said it's a false teaching. It says that Christians, like if somebody's a true Christian, then they wouldn't experience grief. No, people can be a true Christian and grieve and just not know how to really deal with something that's at right. the time. So I'm putting that out there, and that's my feelings on it, and I'm saying it boldly, and that's what I believe and that's what I know about our Heavenly yes. Father. That he is, he is loving, yes. He is gracious, He is merciful, and He knows the whole big picture and the whole that spectrum of, of everything that we sometimes think we might know, but we don't know. But the two people that we talked about, I'm going to say this about them. Anytime that I saw Trish and I saw Pete... Yeah. For the short time that it was, they were always kind to me. Always they were loving. loving. Yes. They were always positive. They loved the Lord. They loved they were the going Lord. Hard after the Lord. Anytime I would hear them speak, I would hear them encouraging people and lifting them up, and that's yes. what I know about them. Yep. Me too. Amen. Amen. So this is a And book. we miss them. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, this is Biblical Truths That Bring Healing. This is a book for grief. Heavenly Father, my heart is aching and all I see is darkness. I am alone and lost. I know that there is no way out of this on my own. I trust that you are my light and my salvation and that you can pull me out of the valley I find myself in. Father, hold me in your arms and let me feel your warmth. Give, give the rest my heart so desperately needs to heal. 
Lead me to still waters that I may be at peace during this time of chaos. My heart is yours to mold. Amen. Amen. And like Gina and I said, before we have a round of teaching, we want to give an opportunity if somebody has never given their life to the Lord or they were, they were on fire for the Lord and something happened and they grown lukewarm or cold and they turned away, this is the time to come back. Our Heavenly Father is always drawing and wanting his children to come back. He leaves the 99 for the one. That is his. That, that is right. who he is. So we just, just repeat this after us. If, if you were somebody and you were dealing with this, come back home today. And it's just so simple. When it's all just done from your heart, it's your heart. And just you speak this out of your mouth. And it's just so simple. And you just say, Heavenly Father, I repent of my sin. I turn my back on sin, and I turn my heart to you. Thank you for forgiving me. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I believe in my heart that God is raised from the dead. I thank you that today I am forgiven. I am brand new. I am washed clean by the blood of Jesus. I am brand new. In Jesus' name, I'm coming back home to you today, and I'm going to serve you the rest of the days of my life. In Jesus' name. And also, I want to add, anybody dealing with grief right now, Gina and I pray a peace that passes all understanding to come into your room right now, wherever you are at, at home, at church, Heavenly Father, I pray that you just touch each individual that might be dealing with any type of grief, pain, or loss. I pray that you just flood their room right now with your beautiful, loving, compassionate presence and just bring them comfort and peace. We speak life over you. We speak peace. And we want you to know that we love you. And most importantly, our Heavenly Father loves you. Yes, he does. We'll see you soon. Again, we really would appreciate it. Flood this all over your Facebook page. Because this may not pertain to you. But we can assure you it does pertain to other people. Yes. So we'll see you soon. We love you. And God bless you.